Welcome back to day 204 of our Bible in a Year reading plan. And today's reading will be reading Isaiah chapters 47 through 51. So let's dive into the word of God. Come down, virgin daughter of Babylon, and sit in the dust. For your days of sitting on a throne have ended. O daughter of Babylon, never again will you be the lovely princess, tender and delicate. Take heavy millstones and grind flour. Remove your veil and strip off your robe. Expose yourself to public view. You will be naked and burdened with shame. I will take vengeance against you without pity. Our Redeemer, whose name is the Lord of Heaven's armies, is the Holy One of Israel. O oh, beautiful Babylon, sit now in darkness and silence. Never again will you be known as the Queen of Kingdoms. For I was angry with my chosen people, and I punished them by letting them fall into your hands. But you, Babylon, showed them no mercy. You oppressed even the elderly. You said, I will reign forever as queen of the world. You did not reflect on your actions or think about your consequences. Listen to this, you pleasure-loving kingdom, living at ease and feeling secure. You say, I am the only one and there is no other. I will never be a widow or lose my children. Well, both these things will come upon you in a moment, widowhood and the loss of your children. Yes, these calamities will come upon you. Despite all your witchcraft and magic, you felt secure in your wickedness. No one sees me, you said, but your wisdom and knowledge have led you astray. And you said, I am the only one and there is no other. So disaster will overtake you and you won't be able to charm it away. Calamity will fall upon you and you won't be able to buy your way out. A catastrophe will strike you suddenly, one for which you are not prepared. Now use your magic charms. Use the spells you have worked at all these years. Maybe they will do you some good. Maybe they can make someone afraid of you. All the advice you receive has made you tired. Where are all your astrologers, those stargazers who make predictions each month? Let them stand up and save you from what the future holds. But they are like a straw burning in a fire. They cannot save themselves from the flame. You will get no help from them at all. Their hearth is no place to sit for warmth, and all your friends, those with whom you've done business since childhood, will go their own ways, turning a deaf ear to your cries. Amen. That is the end of Isaiah chapter 47, and we see the Lord giving a prophecy about the Babylonians and how calamity is going to come upon them suddenly, and they're going to be destroyed, which we know happened to the kingdom of Babylon. But let's go on to chapter 48. Listen to me, O family of Jacob, you who are called by the name of Israel and born into the family of Judah. Listen, you who take oaths in the name of the Lord and call on the God of Israel. You don't keep your promises, even though you call yourself the holy city and talk about depending on the God of Israel, whose name is the Lord of heaven's armies. Long ago, I told you what was going to happen. Then suddenly I took action and all my predictions came true. For I know how stubborn and obstinate you are. Your necks are as unbending as iron. Your heads are as hard as bronze. That is why I told you what would happen. I told you beforehand what I was going to do. Then you could never say, my idols did it. My wooden image and metal God commanded it to happen. You have heard my predictions and seen them fulfilled, but you refuse to admit it. Now I will tell you new things, secrets you have not yet heard. They are brand new, not things from the past. So you cannot say, we knew that all the time. Yes, I will tell you of things that are entirely new, things you never heard of before. For I know so well what traitors you are. You have been rebels from birth. Yet for my own sake and for the honor of my name, I will hold back my anger and not wipe you out. I have refined you, but not as silver is refined. Rather, I have refined you in the furnace of suffering. I will rescue you for my sake. Yes, for my own sake. I will not let my reputation be tarnished and I will not share my glory with idols. Listen to me, O family of Jacob, Israel, my chosen one. I alone am God, the first and the last. It was my hand that laid the foundations of the earth, my right hand that spread out the heavens above. When I call out the stars, they all appear in order. Have any of your idols ever ever told you this? Come, all of you, and listen. 
The Lord has chosen Cyrus as his ally. He will use him to put an end to the empire of Babylon and to destroy the Babylonian armies. I have said it. I am calling Cyrus. I will send him on this errand and will help him succeed. Come closer and listen to this. From the beginning, I have told you plainly what would happen. And now the sovereign Lord and his spirit have sent me with this message. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God, who teaches you what is good for you and leads you along the paths you should follow. Oh, that you had listened to my commands. Then you would have had peace flowing like a gentle river and righteousness rolling over you like waves in the sea. Your descendants would have been like the sands along the seashore, too many to count. There would have been no need for your destruction or for cutting off your family name. Yet even now, be free from your captivity. Leave Babylon and the Babylonians. Sing out this message. Shout it to the ends of the earth. The Lord has redeemed his servants, the people of Israel. They were not thirsty when he led them through the desert. He divided the rock and water gushed out for them to drink. But there is no peace for the wicked, says the Lord. Amen. That is the end of Isaiah chapter 48. And once again, we see the Lord talking about Israel and how stubborn they are and how all of this came upon them because of their stubbornness and failure to obey his commands. But yet because of his own name, he's going to worship. Um, he's going to redeem them and bring them back to the land that he promised them um, through the Medes and the Persians, namely Cyrus. But all right, let's go on to chapter 49. Listen to me, all you in distant lands. Pay attention, you who are far away. The Lord called me before my birth. From within the womb, he called me by name. He made my words of judgment as sharp as a sword. He has hidden me in the shadow of his hand. I am like a sharp arrow in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant, Israel, and you will bring me glory. I replied, but my work seems so useless. I have spent my strength for nothing and to no purpose, yet I leave it all in the, the Lord's hand. I will trust God for my reward. And now the Lord speaks, the one who formed me in my mother's womb to be his servant, who commissioned me to bring Israel back to him. The Lord has honored me and my God has given me strength. He says, you will do more than restore the people of Israel to me. I will make you a light to the Gentiles and you will bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. The Lord, the Redeemer, and the Holy One of Israel says to the one who is despised and rejected by the nations, to the one who is the servant of rulers, kings will stand at attention when you pass by. Princes will also bow low because of the Lord, the faithful one, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. This is what the Lord says. At just the right time, I will respond to you. On the day of salvation, I will help you. I will protect you and give you to the people as my covenant with them. Through you, I will reestablish the land of Israel and assign it to its own people again. I will say to the prisoners, come out in freedom and to those in darkness, come into the light. They will be my sheep grazing in green pastures and on hills that were previously bare. They will neither hunger nor thirst. The searing sun will not reach them anymore. For the Lord in his mercy will lead them. He will lead them beside cool waters and I will make my mountains into level paths for them. The highways will be raised above the valleys. See, my people will return from far away, from lands to the north and west and from as far south as Egypt. Sing for joy, O heavens. Rejoice, O earth. Burst into song, O mountains. For the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on them in their suffering. Yet Jerusalem says, the Lord has deserted us. The Lord has forgotten us. Never can a mother forget her nursing child. Can she feel no love for the child she has born? But even if that were possible, I would not forget you. See, I have written your name on the palms of my hands. Always in my mind is a picture of Jerusalem's walls and ruins. Soon your descendants will come back and all who are trying to destroy you will go away. Look around you and see, for all your children will come back to you. As surely as I live, says the Lord, they will be like jewels or bridal ornaments for you to display. Even the most desolate parts of your abandoned land will soon be crowned with your people. Your enemies who enslaved you will be far away. The generations born in exile will return and say, 
we need more room. It's crowded here. Then you will think to yourself, who has given me all these descendants? For most of my children were killed and the rest were carried away into exile. I was left here all alone. Where did all these people come from? Who bore these children? Who raised them for me? This is what the sovereign Lord says. See, I will give a signal to the godless nations. They will carry your little sons back to you in their arms. They will bring your daughters on their shoulders. Kings and queens will serve you and care for all your needs. They will bow down to the earth before you and lick the dust from your feet. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who trust in me will never be put to shame. Who can snatch the plunder of war from the hands of a warrior? Who can demand that a tyrant let his captives go? But the Lord says, the captives of warriors will be released and the plunder of tyrants will be retrieved. For I will fight those who fight you and I will save your children. I will feed your enemies with their own flesh. They will be drunk with rivers of their own blood. All the world will know that I, the Lord, am your savior and your redeemer, the mighty one of Israel. Amen. That is the end of chapter 49 of Isaiah. And once again, we see the Lord prophesying his restoration of Israel and um, him bringing them back to their country and to their nation and how he's going to prosper them and they're going to flourish. But all right, let's go on to Isaiah chapter 50. This is what the Lord says. Was your mother sent away because I divorced her? Did I sell you as slaves to my creditors? No, you were sold because of your sins. And your mother too was taken because of your sins. Why was no one there when I came? Why didn't anyone answer when I called? Is it because I have no power to rescue? No, that is not the reason. For I can speak to the sea and make it dry up. I can turn rivers into deserts covered with dying fish. I dress the skies in darkness, covering them with cloths of mourning. The sovereign Lord has given me his words of wisdom so that I know how to comfort the weary. Morning by morning, he wakens me and opens my understanding to his will. The sovereign Lord has spoken to me and I have listened. I have not rebelled or turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mockery and spitting. Because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a stone, determined to do his will. And I know that I will not be put to shame. He who gives me justice is near. Who will dare to bring charges against me now? Where are my accusers? Let them appear. See, the sovereign Lord is on my side. Who will declare me guilty? All my enemies will be destroyed, like old clothes that have been eaten by moths. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys his servant? If you are walking in darkness without a ray of light, trust in the Lord and rely on your God. But watch out, you who live in your own light and warm yourselves by your own fires. This is the reward you will receive from me. You will soon fall down in great torment. Amen. That is the end of Isaiah chapter 50. And once again, the Lord is um, talking through the prophet Isaiah. And, you know, he's reminding the people, you know, to trust in him and to not trust in their own light, but to put their faith and trust in the Lord. But all right, let's go on to chapter 51. Listen to me, all who hope for deliverance, all who seek the Lord. Consider the rock from which you were cut, the quarry from which you were mined. Yes, think about Abraham, your ancestor, and Sarah, who gave birth to your nation. Abraham was only one man when I called him, but when I blessed him, he became a great nation. The Lord will comfort Israel again and have pity on her ruins. Her desert will blossom like Eden her barren wilderness like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found there. Songs of thanksgiving will fill the air. Listen to me, my people. Hear me, Israel, for my law will be proclaimed and my justice will become a light to the nations. My mercy and justice are coming soon. My salvation is on the way. My strong arm will bring justice to the nations. All distant lands will look to me and wait and hope for my powerful arm. Look up to the skies above and gaze down on the earth below, for the skies will disappear like smoke and the earth I will wear out like a piece of clothing. The people of the earth will die like flies, but my salvation lasts forever. My righteous rule will never end. Listen to me, 
you who know right from wrong, you who cherish my law in your hearts. Do not be afraid of people's scorn, nor fear their insults. For the moth will devour them as it devours clothing. The worm will eat them as it eats wool. But my righteousness will last forever. My salvation will continue from generation to generation. Wake up, wake up, O Lord. Clothe yourself with strength. Flex your mighty right arm. Rouse yourself as in the days of old, when you slew Egypt, the dragon of the Nile. Are you not the same today, the one who dried up the sea, making paths of, a, of escape through the depths so that your people could cross over? Those who have been ransomed by the Lord will return. They will enter Jerusalem singing, crowned with everlasting joy. Sorrow and mourning will disappear, and they will be filled with joy and gladness. I, yes, I am the one who comforts you. So why are you afraid of mere humans who wither like the grass and disappear? Yet you have forgotten the Lord, your creator, the one who stretched out the sky like a canopy and laid the foundations of the earth. Will you remain in constant dread of human oppressors? Will you continue to fear the anger of your enemies? Where is their fury and anger now? It is gone. Soon all you captives will be released. Imprisonment, starvation, and death will not be your fate. For I am the Lord your God, who stirs up the sea, causing its waves to roar. My name is the Lord of heaven's armies, and I have put my words in your mouth and hidden you safely in my hand. I stretched out the sky like a canopy and laid the foundations of the earth. I am the one who says to Israel, you are my people. Wake up, wake up, O Jerusalem. You have drunk the cup of the Lord's fury. You have drunk the cup of terror, tipping out its last drops. Not one of your children is left alive to take your hand and guide you. These two calamities have fallen on you, desolation and destruction, famine and war. And who is left to sympathize with you? Who is left to comfort you? For your children have fainted and lie in the streets, helpless as antelopes caught in a net. The Lord has poured out his fury. God has rebuked them. But now listen to this, you afflicted ones who sit in a drunken stupor though not from drinking wine. This is what the sovereign Lord, your God and defender says. See, I have taken the terrible cup from your hands. You will drink no more of my fury. Instead, I will hand that cup to your tormentors. Those who said, we will trample you into the dust and walk on your backs. Amen. That is the end of Isaiah chapter 51. And we see the Lord letting his people know that he has taken the cup of judgment from them and that he is ready to restore them. But all right, that is the end of day 204 of our Bible in a Year reading plan. I pray that you are blessed by this reading. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so that you can get the notification for day 205 of our Bible in a Year reading plan. All right, guys, have a blessed day. Bye.